Hello and welcome back to Mongolia. We are in Umnu Gobi in the south of the country. I'm on a tour with Sunpath. The link is in the video description. Nine days, eight nights going around in this van here. Just a few minutes into our journey, we've already taken a stop to take a look at this view of the nothingness ahead of us. And it kind of looks almost like an English seaside with all the Atlantic Ocean there in the distance, as far as the eye can see. You can see it's become a lot browner than it was when we first left. We've been driving along very bumpy roads for probably about an hour and a half now. Give you an idea of the view. This is the road we've been on. The name of this park that we're in is called Gobi Gurvan Saikan National Park and it encompasses where we were yesterday in Yol Valley as well as the sand dunes that we're about to go to and the flaming cliffs. It's a very large area, this national park. So we have made it finally to the Congor sand dunes which stretch up to 180 kilometers long and they are some of the most spectacular in the Gobi Desert and Mongolia. We've stopped here at a brilliant vantage point. As you can imagine it's extremely dry here. Mongolia receives very little rainfall but this area in particular is one of the driest. From here the sand dunes look incredible because there's this thin line of golden shining sand amidst the dark rocky landscape. So we have arrived at the Congo sand dunes. They are spectacular, reaching up to 300 meters in height. I'm hopefully gonna climb one later, but we're very lucky because we've arrived on the day once a year of the Golden Sand Festival, where these rally cars drive up the dunes and race. As the race goes on, you can see all the locals from nearby villages in the Gobi who've come out to watch the annual race. <laughs> Following watching the rally, which was fun, we've driven over a little bit and we're going to ride our camels now. I've ridden on camels in the Thar Desert and the Sahara. These are Bactrian camels, they're slightly different. So we're now on top of the camels. I believe we're riding for about an hour. The Congor dunes behind us. How are you doing guys? Hello. Following 
enjoying our camel ride. We are here at our camp for the night. These sand dunes are right behind there. I thought we were going to climb them today, but we've been told by Sunpath that it's very windy this evening. I don't know if you can tell. The sun's just setting behind the dunes there. And so we're going to wake up early in the morning and climb the sand dunes then. It feels very surreal to me to be staying here in the Gobi Desert. None of the land is arable pretty much. That's why historically in Mongolia they have been herders, cattle raisers and nomads moving from place to place as the season dictates it. The wind is pretty strong right now. I don't know if the microphone is picking me up brilliantly or not. So I will leave it there for today and I will catch you in the morning. Good morning and welcome back. I've switched to my GoPro as I am climbing the dune on the Congor sand dunes this morning and I don't know if you can make it out on my camera but it is quite a long way up and very steep at the top. Um, so I might have to use two hands and put my GoPro in the pocket here. There was no way I was going to be able to take my gimbal and do it with one hand, but let's see how I get on. The others are already starting from my group and you can see the closer they get how small they are here at the top. It is very <laughs> steep at the last stretch actually. Already getting some good views. Shit. Taking a little break. You can see how steep it is here. This is exhausting. You can see our cars down at the bottom, maybe. And James there. <laughs> Great views. This is a lot harder than it looks. I just made it to the top of the dune. That was incredibly difficult, I have to say. Basically, scrambling all the way. You can see the cars at the bottom. But look at the view on the other side. The sand dunes. And behind me. The toughest thing is not having water. It's in the car at the bottom. But thankfully, I can slide down. It won't be too hard. Let's go for a stroll while I recover my breath. <laughs> this isn't uh, for everybody, I would say. If you get driven to the specific point where they drop people off, it'll take you a good while to climb it. You have to use your hands a lot. Whoa. It was worth it. There are two mountain ranges behind the dunes here. One and the other one just behind this one. At various points, the sand dunes become 20 kilometers wide. Here, just a few kilometers.
They call these sand dunes the singing dunes because when the wind blows on it, you can hear a whistling sound. I haven't heard the singing yet, but a lot of people do hear it. It's not very windy today. Maybe if you come when it's windy, you will hear the singing of the Congo sand dunes. After a very long and bumpy ride, we have arrived to look at some petroglyphs dating from between 8,000 and 3,000 BC. Like climbing the sand dunes earlier, it is a little bit tricky here because we're quite high in elevation. My guide says around 2,000 meters above sea level, which is why the air is so thin. And just to check out the petroglyphs, it's a little walk up here, but everyone's struggling as you can see, especially after everyone's so tired from attempting to climb sand dunes this morning. Breathtaking views of the open Gobi around us from such a vantage point. You will see them dotted around Up here you can see one of the largest collection of inscriptions. Here they are offering something to what seems to be the king. There are camels, people riding horses, and then here where people would have lived. So from the petroglyphs we stopped for lunch and I had some dumplings in milk tea soup or milk tea. It's a thing that people love to have in the winter, not really something you should have <laughs> in the Gobi when it's hot and sunny like it was today, but I wanted to try it. So we carried on to where we are now, which is the Flaming Cliffs. We've just arrived in time for sunset. This place is very notable for a number of discoveries, dinosaur skeletons, but not just that, the first dinosaur eggs that were ever discovered and recorded by humans was here. So not only was this the site of rare discoveries, but it also has an incredible beauty to it and dare I say mystery. It looks like somewhere you would find dinosaur eggs and the skeletons of dinosaurs. Look at the desert open up there from these cliffs out into the vast landscape. Where I'm walking towards now, if you see those three individual rocks right here is where the first dinosaur eggs were discovered. They were discovered by an American expedition led by a man named Roy Chapman Andrews in the 1920s and they didn't expect to find them. It only happened to be the case once they were on their way leaving going back to China you can see why the name Flaming Cliffs was given to this area. Even if you're not much of a history buff or care much for dinosaurs, the magic of this place will still impress you.
after that unbelievable sunset I have walked on a little bit to the exact place where most of the dinosaur bones were found right beneath me here I'm on the edge of the cliff and also the eggs at the very bottom somewhere down here sometimes it's just fate when history and natural beauty just sort of come together like this so I've switched my camera around so you can see from my point of view it's quite steep down here so all around here is where various dinosaur bones have been found and the eggs right at the bottom by the way I'm leaving quite swiftly because that in the distance is a sandstorm my gimbal almost cannot stand up uh, straight it'll probably flip over in a second <laughs> we have to leave I took a quick shot in the distance of the sandstorm there and Wow, I've never seen one with my own eyes before, but it's coming and so they've told us, like, get out the way, <laughs> essentially. Such an open, expansive desert back there. I'm just doing the outro of this video as a narration because once I finished filming this clip, I was caught in a sandstorm along with the others. I'm going to make a separate video about this, a kind of travel stories reflection video about how it was being caught in a sandstorm. It was quite scary and exciting at the same time. Within just a few minutes of standing on those cliffs, we couldn't see and all our exposed skin felt like it was being cut. It was a very surreal experience. Obviously I'm fine and everyone else is fine, but I think it's better told in a separate video rather than at the end of this one, which is already, I think, in excess of 20 minutes. A shout out again to my tour company, Sunpath. Their link is in the video description. And follow them on Instagram if you want to keep in touch with what their trips are like. So thank you for watching this video again. Please give it a like if you enjoyed it. It really helps me. Leave a comment below and stay tuned for the next one, which is living with a Mongolian family, showing a girl in detail. Thank you for joining me on this journey around Mongolia. See you on the next one. Peace.